A topic that I've had come up multiple times this last week is Stockholm Syndrome. And now I've got something I need to get off my chest. Welcome back, friends, to another episode of Design Today. I'm your host, Dylan Winspear. Before we get into our topic of Stockholm Syndrome, I wanted to give a shout out real quick to a few people. First, to my most recent patron, Cindy Ross, and also to my most recent coaching session students, Tessa Hadalid and Edwin Singh. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the support. On that note, you can join the same Slack community that nearly 200 other designers have. Receive your invite by going to designtoday.com. Finally, if you're ready to take your UX resume to the next level, then sign up for my all new and completely free course. I've got hours worth of content there for you, original content there to help you step up your resume game and stand out among other designers. That course can also be found on Design Today's website. Just visit designtoday.com slash courses. Now here's how Stockholm Syndrome came up this last week. As you may or may not know, I work full time for a business intelligence company called Domo. We've got a large product team there that's always cranking out new features and whatnot. I work with a number of teams there at Domo and one of them happens to be the mobile team. This last week, we were reviewing our roadmap with our new product manager. And as we were brainstorming the other items that have been on our radar for a while, but not actually developed, I came back to a few items that have been a pain in my side. For example, some inconsistencies we have with our notifications feature, the lack of notifications and part of our product and the inability to manage notifications and other parts. This product manager's reaction was pretty funny as he didn't recall having any of those issues in the product. Not because of his unfamiliarity with the product, but because we've grown so long and so accustomed to having these that we've got our own workarounds now. Stockholm Syndrome has many definitions that extend outside of the design world, but inside the design world, we see Stockholm Syndrome when we tend to oversee glaring mistakes that are right in front of us. Why don't we see them? Because we've become so familiar and accustomed to them that we no longer see them for the problem that they actually are. In other words, the problem's been right in front of us for so long that we've just learned to get on without addressing it. These things tend to happen when we overlook small details in a rush to see a solution come to what we deem complete. I also refer to this as refusing to shine a light on some of the dark corners. After a long slug to complete a heavy lift, there's sometimes this voice in the back of our mind that just wants us to ship it already and be done with it. Or maybe we even think, you know, we'll come back to this once we have more time even if you intend to come right back to it right after shipping it. Don't be fooled. It takes a lot of product team discipline to come back to items right after you've shipped them. Typically, you'll see businesses want to move on to the next shiny object at the earliest possibility. So if you see a rough edge in the product, shine some light on it and flush it out. This is the easiest way to treat the potential future of Stockholm Syndrome. Now, what if that ship has sailed and there are areas in your product that you've just grown blind to? What do you do at that point? When you treat an existing case of Stockholm Syndrome, it's important to note that long-term users will have a hard time letting go of what they're already used to. People don't like change initially. You can help them overcome that challenge and in turn have more confidence in the change yourself if you've taken the basic steps beforehand. If you've done the right research and prioritize users' needs, then the ease of use will quickly win over existing users. I'll say it again, do the research and prioritize the needs of your audience. With the research completed and the right steps taken leading up to the change, even those who may initially have an adverse reaction will grow to enjoy the changes. So my twofold challenge for you is this. First, don't let those rough edges slip into your product, even with the idea that you'll clean them up later. Even if you're just set to just launch your MVP, make sure it's an MDP, minimum delightful product. Don't make it just viable. The second challenge is this. I know you've probably been ignoring some of those rough edges in your product for a while now. If you honestly can't see any, then I challenge you to try and maybe conduct some observational studies. Your audience will help you shine a light on them. Set out today to make a small plan of attack to get some of those dark corners looked at again. Find a way to get them back on your roadmap. Your users will thank you. That's it for me today. If you've liked this episode, then check out the previous episodes or find me on Instagram at design.today and follow along. We'll see you next time.